Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to a read aloud of today's science ebook titled Pass the Energy, Please, as needed for today's science lesson, Unit 3, Lesson 7 Animals and Food. Now, for today's ebook, we'll be reading pages 4 through 30, which I know seems like an awful lot, but bear in mind that today's ebook is uh, going to be a little more perhaps creative and interesting than some of the previous ones we've read, because today's ebook is going to be written entirely in rhyming poetry. And so it's basically going to be one big long poem that describes how plants absorb energy from the sun through photosynthesis and then how animals can take that energy into themselves by eating the plants and then how when other animals eat those animals they claim that energy too so learning all about how energy passes through food chains starting from plants so let's go and take a look at pass the energy please today Starting on page four, link number one, born in the sun. A remarkable thing about the green plant, it makes its own food whereas animals can't. Mixing carbon dioxide, water, and sun, mother nature has photosynthesis fun. A sugary food, homemade in the leaf, travels through stems, bringing relief. This energy needed to blossom and grow is shared by new shoots and roots down below. When roots reach for water, there's magic, osmosis. Minerals pass through the roots in small doses. These liquefied vitamins found in Earth's floor make the soil a natural health food store. It's the same in the sea in the watery world, where seaweed and kelp grow swirly and curled. Light shining down in a merely a glimmer lets plants feed themselves or some fishy swimmer. Quite independent on land or at sea, a green plant produces its own energy. Like a true power plant, the energy is stored Green plants deserve a conservation award. A plant by itself is a link all alone. Its food chain future remains unknown. Till someone comes by with the greatest of ease and firmly demands, pass the energy, please. So perhaps some hungry animal or hungry fish. Chains of two, the big herbivore crew. Herbivores being animals that only eat plants, like bison or pandas. The biggest of herbivores top off their chains by eating huge portions of grasses and grains. Buffalo, hippos, and shy manatees are empowered by plants in great quantities. Saved by their size, even plant-eating dinosaurs live side by side with the meat-eating carnivores. Gorillas love stems and pandas bamboo. The links in their chains add up only to two. Whether leaves, nuts, and honey, or tender young shoots, sweet ripened berries, flowers, or fruits, vegetarian power is equal in strength to the meat chain found in to the meat found in chains of much greater length. Energy passing from one to another is offered by earth to each animal brother. A chain unbroken along the way links plants and creatures from day to day. Three in a chain on the African plain. A sea of grass on the African plain provides for, the, for great herds with the help of the rain. Grazing in harmony, plenty for all. Plant power makes them grow healthy and tall. But instinct reminds the gazelles and giraffes, and rhinos and elephants nursing their calves. Beware of your neighbors, all grazers on guard. Carnivorous cats share your backyard. Carnivorous, or carnivores, that refers to animals that eat meat or eat other animals. A streamlined cheetah, designed for the chase, runs like the wind and soon wins the race. A graceful gazelle, nature's gift to the cat, gives the feline future, and he's thankful for that. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult thing for a creature to give, but a chain unbroken along the way links life on the plane from day to day. So it may be a harsh reality, but a cheetah, which only eats meat, well, cannot get its energy from eating plants. It will have to eat another animal, such as the gazelle, the gazelle being the one who ate the plants. A chain of four on the meadow floor. So this being a chain that contains four living things. A milkweed pod explodes into seed and parachutes down where the meadow mice feed. A nibbling mouse gets his scamper and scurry straight from the seed that he eats in a hurry. But nothing's more tempting than mice on the run to the wigglers and squigglers who bask in the sun. Snakes relish rodents and often depend on mice for the slither to hunt and defend. So the rat eats the milkweed shoot and the snake eats the mouse. 
The satisfied snake is bulging with prey, but danger awaits at the end of his day. Nocturnal creatures need energy too, to see in the dark to do what they do. Alert is the owl who swivels her head when she hears the snake rustle a leaf in his bed. Her wide yellow eyes, designed for the night, get their glow from the reptile captured in flight. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult gift for a creature to give, but a chain unbroken along the way links life in the meadow from day to day. So there we had a four animal or four organism chain there. We had the milkweed pod eaten by the mouse, so the mouse got the energy from the milkweed pod. The snake eats the mouse, so the snake gets the that energy from the uh, from the mouse. But then of course the snake itself is eaten by the owl, so the owl can get that energy as well. So we can see how energy is passed from one organism to the other depending on what eats it. So now we have a five link chain, arctic five link chain up to survive. Phytoplankton surf the sea. Their plants adrift with energy. Too tiny for the eye to see, zillions float invisibly. Now zooplankton, just slightly bigger, gobble them up with ravenous vigor. Power boosted by their prey, zooplankton swim on their way. So the little green things there would be a uh, little phytoplankton, almost like little tiny bits of plant. And then these guys, zooplankton, are a bit bigger. They eat uh, the, the phytoplankton. So that's two chains so far. Next, we're told, unaware that they've been followed, gone in a gulp, their energy swallowed. Like an order to go on the ocean deli, they're digested in an anchovy belly. Anchovies, those being those fish right there. So the anchovies are eating the zooplankton. Eventually, this seafood meal is served to a starving arctic seal. The energy stored is given away to the dappled seal, all black and gray. So we have a food chain developing here, or passing of energy. Phytoplankton gives its energy to zooplankton when it eats it. Zooplankton pass their energy on to anchovies when the anchovies eat them. And then the seal gets that energy when it eats the anchovies. That's only four links so far, so think about what animal might be next that may eat the seal. So take a second to think about it before I page, turn the page in three, two, one. And there we have it. A risk for the seal who pays a high price is a bear by a breathing hole found in the ice. Supper will surface for polar bear who waits for the mammal in need of air. She thickens his blubber to wear in a storm. The polar bear thanks her for keeping him warm. Fattening up in the Arctic so cold gives chubby young cubs a chance to grow old. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult gift for a creature to give, but a chain unbroken along the way links life in the Arctic from day to day. So there was the fifth link in that chain, the polar bear, which eats the seal, thereby giving the polar bear that energy it needs to survive in the Arctic. We are now up to a six link chain in the woodland. Woodland mix makes chain of six. Goldenrod, growing all mustard and green, is a natural magical food machine. When the plant, full of chlorophyll, captures some sun, energy is born and the food chain's begun. So there's some goldenrod flowers there. Caterpillar, looking for a luscious lunch, spots the plant with its crispy crunch. While chomping away on his leafy treat, power is passed to his six pairs of feet. So there's that caterpillar bit there, eating that goldenrod flower and getting that energy. Next up, to a spider in search of a scrumptious snack. The plump, leggy worm is a ripe for attack. She spins a silk dragline and drops from a daisy. Full from her supper, she soon she feels lazy. So the spider, which eats the caterpillar and gets that energy for herself, that's chain number three. Next up, a warbler waits in the brush on a branch, watching for spider to give her a chance. She swoops on her spider, so thankful indeed, for a healthier or heartier meal than a seed from a weed. At the edge of the wood, a weasel is walking. Slinking in the shadows, he's really out stalking. There's not enough time for the songbird to fly. She gives him swiftness and keenness of eye. Watch out, Mr. Weasel. Who looks at your back? A sly red fox is hot on your track. The weasel is energy just within reach. Her pups share the prey, a portion for each. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult thing for a creature to give but a chain unbroken along the way links life in the woodland from day to day. So the warbler of the bird eats the spider, the weasel eats the warbler, and the fox eats the weasel. And with each animal that gets eaten, uh, the energy is passed along to the next. 
Next up, decomposers on the ground. Nutrients go round and round. The animal giants have little to fear, for very few enemies dare to come near. Even top predators, king of their chains, feed hungry scavengers with their remains. The vulture is known as a great opportunist, that preys on the fallen, if finding it soonest. An energy source does not go to waste, it's passed to each creature that fights for a taste. Beetles attracted to carcass and dung, quickly bury their treasure, it's food for the young. And maggots from blowflies will eat all they can, or as ants store their hoard till hungry again. Moths feed on hares and lay eggs on the site. Their larvae won't have to look far for a bite. They'll find enough energy needed to skitter while cleaning up nature's most natural litter. No visible signs remain of the beast, but living things wait in the soil to feast. Something called fungus with tangly thread absorbs even more from the flesh of the dead. And millions of microscopic bacteria attack what's left over in Earth's cafeteria. Earthworms then gobble and tunnel below and mix it all up so that new plants can grow. As energy shared by the great and the small, each breakdown releases the best gift of them all. To the soil, some nutrients make their escape, and the circle of life takes its wonderful shape. All nature's creatures, linked in some way, are returned to the ground in the form of decay. But their energy lives like souls in the earth that nurture new life and cycle new birth. Ecosystems will only survive if balanced food chains keep species alive. Too much of this, too little of that, threatens a healthy habitat. We endanger the creatures by taking their space. They can't make their homes in the natural place. Their food sources dwindle, they die of starvation, and food chains are weakened, a bad situation. Let's learn from the creatures, the wisest of teachers, who pass their energy one to another, respecting and trusting their planet Earth mother. And that, everybody, was Pass the Energy, Please. So thank you for joining us today. Take that knowledge with you, finish up your science lesson, and have a great rest of your day. We will see you next time. Take care.